What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video we'll be taking a look at Protection Warriors and Battle for Azeroth Beta, and there are a lot of changes to them. Fury and Arms also have a lot of changes to them, but Protection seems like there's at least just as many, if not more changes, than the other two, when comparing live to BFA. But just like the rest of my overview videos, this video is not meant to tell you which challenge to pick for the best survivability as a Protection Warrior, or if Protection is the best tank out there now. This is merely to show you what's to come. I'll be showing the baseline abilities and passives, as well as the talents and PvP talents. So let's get started. So here are all the baseline abilities for Protection Warriors, and I believe there's actually more things that are changed than things that are unchanged. So let's start off with Heroic Leap, which is unchanged. Still 45 second cooldown, you can leap to a location, and it damages enemies within 8 yards view, and it still resets the remaining cooldown on taunt. Uh, Berserker Rage is unchanged, still a 1 minute cooldown, you go Berserk removing and granting immunities to Fears, Saps, and Capacitating Effects for 6 seconds. Spell Reflection did get a nerf, so it reduced the magical damage you took on live, by 30% and I believe your artifact weapon made that go up to 50%. You obviously won't have your artifact weapons anymore, but this will now reduce the magical damage you take by 15%. So instead of the 30%. Ignore Pain was also changed and now costs a static amount of rage. So on live it costs 20 to 60 rage. In BFA it will cost 40 rage. And you fight through the pain ignoring 50% of damage taken up to a certain amount of total damage prevented. So on live that's up to 90% and it varies based on how much rage you spent on it. So BFA. It costs a static 40 rage. Last Stand is getting buffed. It's still a 3 minute cooldown, increases your max health by 30% for 15 seconds, but then it instantly heals you for that amount. So essentially, after the 15 seconds, you won't lose the amount healed. It'll still stay with you. Unless it increases your health past your max health, then obviously your health will go down to your max health. A shield wall is unchanged, still a 4 minute cooldown, reduces all damage you take by 40% for 8 seconds. Demoralizing Shout was buffed, so it's going down from a 1.5 minute cooldown to a 45 second cooldown, still does the same thing, reduces the damage all enemies deal to you around you by 20% for 8 seconds. Now Intimidating Shout is returning because it was removed from Protection Warriors and Legion I believe. It's a 1.5 minute cooldown, causes targets or enemies to cower in fear and up to 5 additional enemies within 8 yards to flee. Targets are disoriented for 8 seconds. Uh, Intercept is unchanged, 15 second recharge, generates 15 rage, max 2 charges. When you use it on an enemy, it reduces their movement speed by 50% for 6 seconds, and then when you use it on an ally, it intercepts the next melee or range attack on them within 10 seconds. Hero Throw is unchanged, throws your weapon at an enemy causing physical damage, and it generates high threat. Now Avatar is becoming baseline, it's no longer a talent, and it's actually just slightly buffed from what it was as a talent. So it's still a 1.5 minute cooldown, transforms you into a Colossus for 20 seconds, causing you to deal 20% increased damage and removes all roots and snares, but it will now generate 20 rage so th that's actually across the board for all warriors uh well actually avatar is still a talent for the other warriors but it will also generate 20 rage for them now rallying cry is coming back as baseline so it's a three minute cooldown let's lose a rallying cry granting all party raid members within 40 yards 15 percent temporary and maximum health for 10 seconds so after that 10 seconds this health does go away. So these next few abilities are unchanged. Thunderclap is unchanged. Its cooldown is still based off your haste. You damage enemies within 8 yards of you and it reduces their movement speed by 20% for 10 seconds. Generates 5 rage. Devastate is unchanged. You hit the target for physical damage. And then revenge is unchanged. It still costs 30 rage. Its cooldown is based off your haste. And you deal damage to enemies in front of you. And your successful dodges and parries cause your next revenge to become free. Shield Slam is just getting slightly nerfed. Its cooldown is still based off of your haste. You hit a target with your shield causing physical damage. Devastate, Thunderclap, and Revenge ha still have a 30% chance to reset the cooldown of Shield Slam. But it will generate 15 rage whereas on live that is 20 rage. Shield Block also slightly nerfed. It will now cost 30 rage up from 15 rage. Other than that, it does the same thing. You block all melee attacks against you for 6 seconds. And and these blocks can be critical blocks, and it increases Shield Slam's damage by 30% while active. Still has two charges. Victory Rush, a slight nerf to it. It will now heal you for 20% of your max health instead of on live, it's 30%, and it's still only usable within 20 seconds after you kill an enemy that yields experience or honor. Now, Shockwave is becoming baseline, which is kind of interesting because they originally said that they're removing all AoE stuns because the other specs don't have Shockwave in their talent tree. They removed Shockwave completely from the other specs. 
but protection is getting a baseline. And its cooldown is 30 seconds down from 40 seconds. You stun all enemies in front of you for 2 seconds instead of on live that's 3 seconds. And the part where it says cooldown reduced by 20 seconds if it strikes at least 3 targets has been removed from the baseline effect. That uh, effect is actually being a talent which I'll show when I talk about the talents. Now pummel is unchanged. It's still your interrupt. 15 second cooldown. Taunt is unchanged. I don't know why they would change taunt. Still at 8 second cooldown. Generate 2 threat. Uh, Battle Shout is returning for all warriors which is nice. 15 second cooldown. It increases the attack power of all raiding party members within 100 yards by 10% for 1 hour. So some classes are getting their raid utility buffs back. Warriors are one of them and they're all getting Battle Shout which is awesome. And then as you can tell uh, Battle Cry was removed for all warrior specs. Now let's take a look at the passive abilities where there's only just one thing added. Uh, let's see, we have Deep Wounds, which is unchanged. Your Devastate and Revenge also cause bleed damage over 15 seconds. Your Mastery is unchanged. It still increases the chance to block and chance to critically block and it also increases your attack power. And then Vanguard is new. So what this does is it increases your stamina by 30% and your armor is increased by 40% of your strength which is awesome. Now let's take a look at the talents and just like the baseline abilities, I believe there's actually more changes to the talents than there are unchanged things. Like every tier has at least one change, I think every tier might have at least two changes, and some tiers are just completely changed, all three things. I will also talk about the PvP talents if you care about those. So the first tier, Enter the Fray was moved all the way up here and it was actually buffed, so you gain 3% haste for each enemy or ally within 10 yards up to 15% haste. So on live, that is just enemies, and I believe it's 15 yards, which, uh, that uh, actually the 15 yards is a nerf because it's going down from 15 yards to 10 yards, but it's now allies and enemies. So I guess on boss fights where there's like no ads, uh, this would be more useful for you. But anyways, punish is completely new. So shield slam deals 20% increased damage and reduces enemies damage against you for 3% for 9 seconds. That's new. Impending victory is uh, unchanged. It was just moved up to this tier. Still replaces victory rush. Still a 30 second cooldown costs 10 rage and it still heals you for 15% of your max health. So I guess that's the only benefit of victory rush getting nerfed from 30% health to 20% health is that it doesn't make impending victory look as bad. This next tier wasn't changed that much. These things should look familiar to you. It's just these two were moved up to this tier. So Crackling Thunder is unchanged. It still increases the radius of Thunderclap by 50%. Bounding Stride is unchanged. Passive reduces the cooldown on Hero Gleep by 15 seconds and Hero Gleep now also increases your run speed by 70% for 3 seconds. And then Safeguard was unchanged. Intercepting a friendly target now also causes 30% of their damage taken to transfer to you for 6 seconds. So for the level 45 tier, best served cold is unchanged. Still a passive revenge deals 5% more damage per target hit up to 25%. Unstoppable Force is new because this buffs Avatar and Avatar is baseline. Avatar increases the damage of Thunderclap by 100% and reduces its cooldown by 50%. And then Dragon Roar is becoming protection as well as the other specs. So it's going to be a 35 second cooldown up from 25 second cooldown. It will generate 10 rage and its effect has been changed. So it deals physical damage to all enemies within 12 yards and reduces their movement speed by 50% for 6 seconds. So I feel like that's kind of a nerf to what it was before, but Protection Warriors are getting it now. The level 60 tier, Indomitable, has been nerfed, so it was moved up to this tier and it will now only increase your maximum health by 10%. So on live, it increases your maximum health by 20% and it buffed Ignore Pain, no longer buffs Ignore Pain, and it will now only increase your maximum health by 10%. Never Surrender, its effect is unchanged, it was just moved up to this tier. Ignore Pain will prevent up to 100% more damage based on your missing health. And then Bolster is new. So Last Stand's cooldown is reduced by 60 seconds, and it additionally causes you to block all melee attacks. This next tier, Menace is new. Intimidating Shout disorients enemies for an additional 4 seconds, and causes all enemies to cower in fear instead of fleeing. So, how Intimidating Shout works is that only the target you use it on cowers in fear, and then all enemies around you flee. Well, now all enemies around you will cower in fear, meaning that they won't run away when fear. They'll just stand still and cower in place. Rumbling Earth is new-ish, kind of. This effect used to be baked into Shockwave when Shockwave was a talent. When Shockwave strikes at least three targets, its cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds, which meaning that its cooldown will go down from 30 seconds to 20 seconds, which is how it was on live. And then Stormbolt is unchanged, it was just moved all the way down to this tier, still a 30 second cooldown, hurls your weapon at an enemy causing physical damage and they get stunned for 4 seconds. This next tier, nerfs all around, 
Booming Voice was nerfed. Demoralizing Shouts also generates 40 Rage, which is down from 60 Rage, and increases damage you deal to affected targets by 15%, down from 25%. Vengeance has been uh, nerfed, I guess. Ignore Pain reduces the Rage cost of your next Revenge by 33%, and Revenge reduces the Rage cost of your next Ignore Pain by 33%. On Live, both those are 35%. And then Devastator has been nerfed. It was moved down to this tier. Your auto attacks deal additional physical damage and have 20% chance to, to reset the remaining cooldown on shield slam and live that is 30% and uh, it will no longer generate five more rage. Still replaces Devastate though. Now the final tier for the most part is unchanged. The only change to it is anger management for every 10 rage you spent. It will reduce the cooldown of avatar last stand, shield wall, and demoralizing shot by one second. So before this affected Rallying Cry, but Rallying Cry isn't a thing anymore, but it now affects Avatar. Heavy Repercussion is unchanged. Still passive, Shield Slam extends the duration of Shield Block by one second, and Shield Block increases the damage of Shield Slam by an additional 30%. And the Ravager is unchanged. Still instant, one minute cooldown. Throws down a Whirling Weapon at a location, inflicting damage to all enemies within eight yards uh, over six seconds, and increases your parry chance by 35%. For 12 seconds, so that's unchanged. Now for the PvP talents. If you did not watch my video going over how PvP talents work, this is essentially how it goes. That you have four bubbles here. This bubble, the top one, is the same for all classes and all specs. It is Adaptation, Relentless, and Gladiator's Medallion, which is all on live. They're on the first tier, and you get to pick between one of these. Now these next three bubbles are all the same. It's just a giant pool of your already existing PvP talents. So as you can tell. No longer on a tier system. I can pick any of these three that I want. So if there are three that are currently on the same tier on live that I really like, I can pick them all here, except they did prune just a few of them. But the rest of these, these names should look familiar because they're all on live and their effects have actually not been changed at all, which seems to be a theme for all Warriors Honor Talents in BFA. So I'm just going to read the names of them. If you want to know what they do, you can pause the video or you can read the Honor Talents of your Protection Warrior. But we have Disarm, Sword and Board, Bodyguard, Leave No Man Behind, Morale Killer, Shield Bash, Thunderstruck, Warpath, Dragon Charge, Mass Spell Reflection, Oppressor, and Ready for Battle. And those are all of the PvP talents as well as all of the normal talents. And there you have it, all the current changes to Warriors in BFA. Now this is the beta, so everything is definitely subject to change. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Do any of you main a Protection Warrior and are happy with how they'll turn out in BFA, or do you hate the changes? I'd like to know. But if you guys like this video, you can leave a like on it, sub to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.